Ladies and gents, this is going to be a slightly different video to my normal ones here on United People's TV, but I would please ask at the very beginning here, watch the whole video before you leave a comment. This is something I feel quite strongly about. Uh, it's something that I think has been developing over the summer. We kind of knew it going into the summer, and I believe that's been the base of the frustration is fear of Manchester United fans of what we're on the edge of, on the precipice of. Because Manchester United finishing 35 points behind City and 34 points behind Liverpool last season. That's not even the end of it. We finished nearly 20 points behind Chelsea. 11 points behind Arsenal. Like 12 points behind Spurs. Man United, if we don't get it right this summer, we're on the verge of really just disappearing into the abyss and watching all those teams above us just go somewhere else. That's why, for me, failure is not an option. It's, it'll be catastrophic if Man United failed in this summer transfer window for this man, a man who was brought in at, at, to such excitement because United fans looked at Eric Ten Hag and thought, you know what, we finally got a manager who I think that can take us towards that top table again that we haven't dined at for a long, long time. But the way that this summer has sh uh, shaped up so far, it's compounding fears of United fans. Now, I still, I don't know, you could call this naive at this point if you want, but I still stand pretty, I wouldn't say confident, but I think we'll, we ha we'll be happy overall at the end of the summer transfer window. But the, the, lo the longer it goes on the day by day basis at the moment now, and we watch everything that's happening around us, we realize just how big this summer is. And I'll be honest, I'm not even really talking about Liverpool signing Darwin Nunes. They finished 34 points ahead of us. They've lost Sadio Mane. They've brought in Darwin Nunes directly as an immediate replacement. They can do that. That's, that's where they're at as a club. And we can only look on that with jealous eyes. It's as simple as that. And I'm not even really losing my shit over the fact that City are spending 45, 42 million pounds on what is effectively a squad strengthening signing. It is ridiculous how far ahead those two teams are. But they are so far ahead that as much as I want to look at them and say, that's where United need to get to. It's not even the focus of my fears really, this summer. Because we take a look at the Premier League table. As I said, look, 35 points we finished behind C City. 34 points behind Liverpool. What about Chelsea? Nearly 20 points, as I said. Nearly 20 points behind. Uh, we are so far away from even the top four, even the top five, that this summer is so unbelievably big and so unbelievably important for Manchester United to get right. And that, I think, is at the core of the frustration of United fans. It's sort of like the unspoken fear that everyone has. They can see in front of us, after years and years and years of a poor strategy, of poor spending, we're now really on the precipice of slipping into genuine, just mid-table contenders. Because, if, as I said, you can talk about City, you can talk about Liverpool. Uh, and... As much as I want to get frustrated about their, not frustrated, I don't want to get frustrated, but they're so far ahead. What's the fucking point? Like, we're not in that conversation anymore at the moment. And that's just a reality check. But you look at what Arsenal are doing here with Fabio Vieira going there in a 40 million euro signing. Decent signing. Could well be good. They've now agreed a 45 million pounds deal to sign Gabriel Jesus. Now, that may not be the most incredible signing. It may not work out. It may be a very Arsenal signing. But that is some serious intent shown by Arsenal with Mikel Arteta. And it's not just them. You look at Chelsea, what's going on. Todd Burley. Burley? I would say his name wrong. Todd Burley. Got it. Todd. He's taken over Chelsea. 200 million is likely what they're going to be spending in the summer transfer window. Chelsea always spend big. Chelsea have spent big. Chelsea came in and changed the status quo in the Premier League. They were the team that came in with the Roman Abramovich money and created this scenario, scenario we're in. That they're still taking advantage of. We're not because of our owners. And we know that. But then you can even look at fucking Spurs. And Yves Basuma coming in there. Ivan Perisic. Antonio Conte is being backed this summer. And they will definitely make more signings. So all of those conversations there, right? I'm talking about all the teams above us. I'm talking about City there. Liverpool. Chelsea, Spurs and Arsenal. How all of them. Look, 11 points was the closest gap there. And Arsenal... As I said, I still think we will make the signings that will make this a decent transfer window. But the, the, the scope of the competitiveness in the Premier League, year on year on year, gets more, more, it gets harder, gets tougher, gets 
more intense. And we're talking about all these teams looking upwards. We've got to look downwards as well. Because Newcastle have every intention of turning themselves into Manchester City version 2. It's the reason they were bought by the Saudi state. It's the reason they're going to spend big money, 37 million on Sven Botman. They've just got Nick Pope in as a, cent as a goalkeeping signing. There's no doubt that Newcastle are still probably going to spend in excess of 100 million plus on other signings. This, it, it, it's at this point, we've been at crossroads before. We've been at, and you can talk about it in the history of the Premier League from when Man United came through in the 90s and then we were challenged with Arsenal and what went happened there and we came on top of it with the treble winning team. Then we had Arsenal again after. Then we came into the Chelsea team in 2003 and that point where we all thought Fergie was going to potentially leave. He turned it over. We won three in a row. We won a double in 2008. Then City came in. They were noisy neighbours. They started it. Chelsea was still competing at that point. Of course, it went to the point where City won the league in 2012. We won the league in 2013. And we all know what's fucking happened since then. There's been a lot of competition that's always happened in the Premier League. And United have always bounced back. But United have slowly been going on the elevator downwards. And we're just, we're at that, we're at that point where an emergency stop is needed. Because the Glazers strategy has dragged us into this situation. We all know what the Glazers strategy is. I have, I've done a long video, a video a long, long time ago now on the fact that the Glazers strategy has always been around the top four. They've never had the ambition, really, overall, to win the Premier League again. Because they, they do use United as a cash cow. We fucking know that. Jeez, I'm not going to tell you that. We, we're not, I'm not going to waste my time speaking about that at this particular moment. But their strategy of a lack of ambition, of an acceptance that top four is a good enough finish, has allowed and create this, created the circumstances for this situation to exist. And it's why I will support everything that the 1958 does. That I will support anything that fans do collectively to try and get rid of them. I don't know whether it's going to work, but all you can do is try. But that lack of ambition, that concept of just going top four is all we need, has created the circumstances for this mentality to infest the club. For this situation to exist in the Premier League, where we finished 11 points behind Arsenal in fifth. And in a season where we're about to go in and Newcastle are about to emerge as this new financial powerhouse, we're going to get sandwiched. We're just above a club which has 10 times more ambition in terms of winning than we do right now in Newcastle. But we brought in, as I said, there was so much excitement about Eric Ten Hag coming in. And rightly so, because I think he's a fantastic manager. I think he's a sort of manager who can take us back to the top table. And I still stand by the fact that at the end of the summer, I do think we will be happy with the signings that we make. I don't know whether we're going to get Martinez and De Jong and Anthony. I'm pretty damn confident at this point we're getting De Jong. It's just a shame, a goddamn shame, and a, da a damaging shame that it's taken this long to happen. <clears throat> but I think that's why I wanted to do this video. The frustrations that I think United fans have had all summer, I felt were slightly exaggerated up to a certain point. And I told you... In the week following the first bid that went into De Jong, I wanted to see how United changed their approach there because I wanted to see something new from United. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything new from United. We've seen United now on the verge of bringing in Tom Keane, a new transfer specialist, if you want to call him that. I'm going to do a bit of separate video on him, but it's, an admit it's, an, it, it's Man United admitting that this summer has not gone right so far because it hasn't gone right so far. There is still plenty of time to get these signings done. But I wanted to do this video to make it abundantly clear that we are literally on the edge now we are on the edge because <clears throat> and i'm not just talking i told you i'll repeat this one more time it's not because liverpool are making signings they're 34 points ahead of us it's not because city are making signings like that they're 35 points ahead of us it's the fact that this is the premier league table we finished 11 points behind arsenal and they've gone out and they've signed fabio vieira and they're gonna sign gabriel jesus they are showing intent <clears throat> sorry they are showing intent to get further away from us and as well as them doing that Chelsea are going to spend big as well as them doing that Spurs are spending and supporting their manager as well as all of that Newcastle they're going to be biting at our heels this is a summer where the strategy of the Glazers has to be abolished if we really are going it's not good enough anymore to just have the ambition to just chase that top four it's too competitive in the Premier League now 
it's not possible to sustainably stay in the top four with when your ambition is just to hang in there. It won't work. If we do that, we will just fall into mid... We've already fallen into mid-table obscurity. But we'll fucking stay here. Unless this summer... We, we cannot get this summer wrong. Get this summer wrong. And I don't know how... Look, as I said, just based on last season to this season, there's an 11-point gap to get to close. No, more than that. Fourth is 13 points. To close for fourth. And all the teams above us are strengthening. This, this is why United fans... This is why the frustration boiled over so quickly. Because I think deep down, United fans know this. And we can see it happening. And it's that fear that drives a, an exaggerated version of frustration. But United have got to get it right, man. A, a failure in this summer transfer window genuinely is an absolute catastrophe. And it's why we go as far as to say that this is the most important transfer window I think we've ever had in the Premier League. Now, you can let me know what you think in the comments, eh? I'm sure some of you might... This, is, this isn't a doom and gloom video. I think this is just a reality check. It's just like we've got to realise what's in front of us and why this summer transfer window is so important. But you can let me know what you think, as you always do, in the comments below.